Are you stuck on your genealogy research? Have you hit a brick wall? Are you chasing hints and want to learn more about really how to do research kind of beyond the leafy hints? I have a new research strategy that may be able to help you get unstuck when we come back. Hey, welcome back to another episode on Genealogy TV. My name is Connie Knox. I am a lifelong genealogist here to help you go further faster and factually with your family research. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so that you get notified each time I upload a video. This video has two handouts available for channel members. That's the info access level of channel membership. If you wanna learn more about that, hit the join button below this video on the YouTube channel. All right, so what is this strategy? I created this strategy really for people like you who might be struggling to find the answer to some of your research questions. As a professional genealogist, a coach, and from some of the viewer comments and questions that I get, I can see that there's a real lack of focus and a real lack of a research plan. So this strategy I'm calling the trifecta strategy, and it is going to help you with that path. Now we're gonna jump over to the computer and show you how it works. Really, the trifecta strategy kind of helps you figure out what it is you're going to research. And it, what it's doing is it's using uh, the power of three. And so if we think about three to the third power, for example, three times three times three is 27. So eventually we're going to be talking about a goal of 27, uh, 27 new things that you're going to want to try and find. And how you're going to do that is through three resources and you're going to search those three resources in three different ways. So the goal here really is to try and find 27 new results. And again, we're going to search three resources in three different ways. And so let's just take a, take a look at the word trifecta for a moment. Uh, you know, the trifecta word is kind of defined as a bet in which a person is betting on the forecast of three finishers in, the, in a race in the correct order, or a run of three wins or grand events. The word trifecta also is Latin or Greek for the word tri, meaning three. So... Um, once you kind of learn this strategy, it's really not that hard. I think once you get the, the, the idea going in your head, you will use this over and over and over again. So it's three to the power of three. Hopefully we'll come up with uh, 27 results. So the idea here is that you're going to use three major resources. You're going to search uh, Ancestry. You're going to search it by name, location, and fan club. You're going to search family search by name, location, and fan club. You're going to search a third choice. Now here I've put plugged in my heritage as a third choice, but it could also be something like the fan club. I mean, the find a grave uh, website. It could be find my past again by name, location, and fan club. And so we're going to kind of dig into that here in a moment, but that third choice is really up to you and it's, and it's what makes sense for you. Okay. So again, that third choice name, location, and fan club. And that when I say name, I'm really referring to your target ancestor. And so we're going to take the tree analogy a little bit farther and we're going to talk about, <laughs> we're going to pretend that the, the rings of this tree are, is our uh, goal, our target. So we're going to kind of start with a broad research and we're going to, in three different ways, we're going to search location. And I start with location and I firmly believe that this is one of the most important things you can do is to start your research with location, not your ancestor's name. Because you want to learn everything you can about the location in which your ancestor uh, is uh, located if you know it. And then you're going to search uh, by name in three different ways. And then you're going to search the fan club. And we'll talk more about the fan club in a minute, but you're going to search the fan club in three different 
ways, or really three different resources, with the goal and the idea that you're going to come up with 27 different facts about your target ancestor that you didn't have before. So the trifecta strategy is kind of a path, okay? And first you're going to identify your target ancestor. Who is it you want to know more about? Then you're going to gather what you already know. And then you're going to define your research question. What is it you want to know about your target ancestor? And then you're going to search the three major resources. Uh, again, by location, name, and fan club. You're going to hear me say this over and over again because you're going to memorize it. The goal being new facts and new records and ultimately the answer to your research question. So uh, first, we're going to get that target ancestor. We're going to figure out who that is. We're going to go over to ancestor and we're going to research there. Then we're going to research at family search and then we're going to research your third choice. And we're going to search by location, name, and fan club. All right, so over at Ancestry, um, so every one of these uh, resources has a slightly different way of doing it. So we're going to dig in and talk about what it is that we're going to research. So at Ancestry, we're going to target uh, the profile, which is the typical way people do it, but profile either from the profile or from the tree, that is the name research. We're going to search the uh, card catalog for locations, and we're going to search all collections over at Ancestry. And by the way, for those of you who just chase hints and those little leaves that are on, at Ancestry, and once the leaves are gone, if you think there's nothing left, um, I want to remind you that Ancestry used to say that they only delivered 10% of the hints. And so... Uh, 10% of the records, I should say, that are available at Ancestry. And so you're missing 90% of what could be there. Um, I think the algorithms have, have changed quite a bit and they deliver more than that now, but um, I just want to give you the heads up that there's a lot more out there to find beyond the, beyond the hint. So as we uh, get into the typical way most people, the kind of the common way people research is either from the tree, they click on the ancestor and they click the search button, or they, they go straight from the profile and they hit the search in the upper right corner. And this is our first step. We are going to do this to see what we can get. But we're also going to go over to the search box and we're going to drop down to the card catalog. And we're going to search... Uh, for location and we're going to use the filters over there and we're going to search location keywords and era but we're really kind of after location research first from the card catalog and then we're going to be able to drill into the records uh, specific for your target ancestor so this is the way i start every uh, search at ancestry and i filter by location first i'm really looking to find out more about the information about the location in which I'm researching. And so uh, to do that, you know, you kind of have to scroll down to the bottom. It's kind of off the main screen here. So I've kind of blown it up here on the left hand side here for you where it says filter by location. And then what you want to do is uh, you, in this case, we're going to use an example for North Carolina. Um, so we're going to drill into the United States and then we're going to drill into the state and we're going to pick North Carolina and then we're going to pick the county of Randolph County and the, I'm showing you this for a reason. And by the way, you can um, search, you can also filter to the decade or you can search by the entire century if you want. Um, but for now, we're just going to stick with Randolph County uh, on this and so... Oh, one of the other things you need to know, too, is that you can filter uh, by category if you have too many uh, results in the upper uh, corner there. You can see there's 32,815 before we even started filtering anything. So, all right, so we, we have filtered by USA, by North Carolina, and by Randolph County here, and we get one result. And the reason why I'm showing you this is because it's a simple uh, list. But there's 
Reminiscences of Randolph County. And this actually does have my ancestors in it. It doesn't have my target ancestor, but it does have my ancestor, Jesse Henley, who was one of the founders of Asheboro, North Carolina. He donated the land for the town square. And that's written about in this book. So we get one result from the card catalog using this filter. And it's got a lot of a uh, good history about Randolph County here, but if we change the way we're doing this and we uh, instead take off Randolph County and put it in the keyword box, we get three results. I'm going to let that sink in for a minute. So keywords can be very powerful. You can use keywords for anything. You can use it for uh, you know, what is the example they show? Flying Tigers or, you know, 101st Battalion or Back Creek Church. Uh, you know, I mean, there's, there's a variety of things you can use for keywords that might change the results. So you want to be researching in both ways. And if you run into too many uh, results, you can, you can change up your filters. In this case, I filtered it by uh, decade, not decade, yes, decade, uh, 1860s, basically. And as you can see, I have 6,694 results by removing Randolph County, but then filtering it to the decade. You can also filter down to the um, category. If you want 6,694 results is a bit much to go through, um, but you might want to uh, filter it into whatever your research question is might, you know, dial it in. It might be you want birth, marriage, and death information uh, if you have all the census records, etc. Okay, so we're going to now search by name using all collections. And over here, if you use the autofill when you search, it loads up all this information from your ancestor's profile, but you can um, kind of cheat. You can let the autofill fill it in and then X out what you don't want. Because I believe that if you let too much data into the search boxes, it may hamper the search results. So you're going to need at least a name, an event, and a date for any era, for any event that you have. So ideally, this is, this is the ideal scenario. If you have an adoption case or a missing parent where you have no idea, um, then you're not going to be able to um, do all three, the name, event, and date or even a range of dates, an estimated, you can always estimate dates, um, but uh, you really want to try and have a name, an event, and a date era in here, and what I would do where the red arrow is, is I would X out all of this stuff down below where it says lived in, I would, I would remove all of that, um, and I might even remove some of the extra information as well, because sometimes less is more. Also pay attention to the right-hand boxes. Um, this one says special collections, but um, sometimes when you uh, get search results, that box will say um, suggested records. And you really want to pay attention to that because the algorithms are saying, um, hello, uh, you might actually want to pay attention to this box over here because we know that there's more information over here that uh, is likely attached to the ancestor you're researching. All right, so now we've got the search results from that all collection search. And there's several things I want to point out here. One is here we've got on this particular situation with Henry Gustav Henley, born in 1862, um, 18,416 results. All right, so that's going to be a bit much. So we're going to have to, to play with this in order to, to filter it out a little bit. And so you can play with the sliders over here. I actually don't recommend this to start. This is the last thing I do, although it's the first thing a lot of people do, is they come over here and they start sliding the sliders over to get it more exact. 
And my experience has been that you don't find as much. What I do is I filter by the categories. And, you know, you can play with all kinds of different scenarios here. Um, you can filter down to the categories, and you can also see how many record sets are on the right-hand side of that column. And then um, also want to pay attention to the smart filters. So the smart filters do this. All right, so everything in that green box is stuff that's already loaded for this ancestor, Henry Gustav Henley, is in the green box, that stuff that I've already loaded. And you can see by the scroll bar on the right-hand side that I have quite a list in there. So what the smart filter does is it says, well, you already have the 1880 census, you already have the 1900 census, and so on. I'm not going to deliver anything from the 1880, 1900, 1910, and so on. Everything that you already have here, I'm not going to deliver any more census records because you have them all. And I don't know that that's necessarily what you want. Also keep in mind that sometimes when you have uh, somebody appearing twice in a census, you found them once, they actually may appear again, as it happened with my ancestor in Laramie, Wyoming. He was in the 1900 census twice. He was in with his father, and he was in with his himself and his wife and children in a house across the street. But if the smart filtering had turned, been turned on, I would not have found him twice. And I actually got more information by looking at both census records. So you can turn the filter off and do the search again to see if you get something new that you hadn't gotten before. So um, that's smart filtering. Ancestry has also added a new filter in this page uh, where you can uh, search by location. And as you can probably guess by now, I'm a huge fan of searching by location. Also pay attention to the category button at the top. You can um, flip over and see everything in a nice group setting um, by category without changing any of the other filters. And sometimes this is beneficial to see it this way and you can scroll down and see which category you really want to focus on. And don't forget to open up all the results in the area in which you are wanting to search. All right, so we're going to do a similar kind of search over at Family Search. We're going to search the Family Search Wiki for location. We're going to search the Family Tree for the target ancestor and the fan club. And we're going to search the target ancestor and fan club in the records. So Family Search Wiki has just updated this front page. And so it used to be you could drill into North America, the shape of North America, and then drill into the United States. Now you have to click on the, on the, on the actual word North America uh, in order to drill into this by location. But once you do, you can drill into North America, then the United States, and then the state, and then to the county if you want, but here we are at the state level and there's several things I want to point out. One is there's a, a lot of stuff here on the right hand side uh, regarding record types and then there's this big blue button over here on the left that uh, gives us North Carolina online genealogy records and then I'm also pointing out Randolph County which we're going to drill into here in a moment but you can actually click on the map in the county in which you want to search and again, the point here is that we're trying to learn all we can about the location in which our ancestor is researching. So when we click on that big blue button, uh, we get the North Carolina level records. And then we can also, you know, I've kind of blown up here the marriage section for you. And if you take a look closer at, you can see that... There are dollar signs next to some things. That's going to take you to a paid service. You can also see uh, this little square with an arrow in it. That's going to take you to another website. And so all you have to do is click on the link and go there. And so even if it says dollar sign, I would go there anyway and take a look and see what it is that uh, you have. So once we drill into the Randolph County part of that map, 
we get a whole lot of information about uh, the area in which we're researching. And one of the things you're looking for are border information. Um, you're looking for, uh, you know, when the, the county was created and all of the records that are available. Holy cow, um, there's a lot of information on the left-hand column there. There's a lot of really, really great information. So then we're also going to search the family tree at Family Search, and I'm saying don't click on the family tree button from the top menu because that goes to your tree. I'm suggesting that you click on search and then family tree, and then use the drop downs for the locations. By the way, you want to always use drop downs, no matter what website you're on for family history. You want to use instead of writing Randolph comma NC you want to use the drop downs because they're trying to standardize all the locations on family search and on ancestry and everywhere they're using standardized locations now and that will help your search as well now uh my ancestor henry gustav henley was born in 1862 some records show him in 1861 so we give it a range by a couple years either side of the date that we think uh, he was born and we conduct our research. Now, once we do, we get a list of records. And as you can see, there's 90,000 records here. Uh, well, actually, people found uh, with the name Henry Henley. Now, I happen to know that this very top person here is the right guy. And take note of the, uh, the number. There is a kind of a person number at, uh, at Family Search. And that is uh, something that you're going to want to pay attention to so that we make sure that there's not two persons uh, in the family search collaborative tree. Remember, family search is a collaborative tree. So it's one giant world tree, and you want to make sure that there isn't more than one person uh, with the same, same data. And if there is, a lot of times you can help merge that information. So we're going to search now the records at family search. And uh, for that, we go to the search, we hit records, and we again fill out the information. Now, there's a reason why we're searching so many different ways is because you're going to get different results every time. So here we've got results from this search. And if you take notice here, there are 486 results. And if we take a look a little bit closer at the profile of the person we're searching here, the information that you're seeing here, there, there's a couple things. One is the tree icon says that this record, this person in this record is linked to the world tree. The document is saying there's some sort of transcription or document related to this record. And the uh, camera icon means there's an image of the record, which is really cool. Also, you know, want to take note of the sources and where it's located and also whether this person is the primary person or is the father um, as you're looking through the list to see if that record is a direct record for that person or is just mentioned in somebody else's record. So again here you want to take note of the of the number the, uh, the 9 NNJ Q7J. This number is unique to uh, this ancestor. You also want to follow this person. Click on that star and anytime someone updates Henry Gustav Henley, I'm going to get an email about it. Remember, it's a collaborative, collaborative tree so anybody can change it, but they have to put the reason why they changed the data or maybe they're just adding to it. So when we drill into one of those records and we take a look, uh, here's the U.S. Census record for 1880, and it's just, it's very similar to what you'll see on almost all of the services. But the cool thing I like about the Family Search version of it, if you click on the Information tab, they have a really nice uh, source citation. And you can click the Copy Source Citation button and, uh, and then paste it into your research notes. All right, so we're going to do the same thing over at MyHeritage. This is our one of our third choice options. So you can use MyHeritage or you can use Find My Past or one of the others. And keep in mind, if you don't have a 
subscription to these services, you don't have to. The idea is to find out what they have and then decide if you're going to subscribe. So what you can do is you can do the same thing. You can do search uh, by location, family tree for the target ancestor and the records for the target ancestor. And of course, you're going to do the fan club as well. So at my heritage to search by location, you're going to cl click on the collections catalog. And then in the, in the keyword box, we're going to type North Carolina and see what they have and see if there's anything that they might have that nobody else has. Um, and you can scroll down and see there's a little free button there. It says service records for Confederate soldiers. Um, you can search that for free without having to uh, have a subscription to MyHeritage. So we're going to search the family trees and to do that you go over to the research tab, drop down to family trees and type in the information and we're going to do the same thing for the record search. We're going to drop down to the record search and search all uh, records and I'm not going to go through in great detail how the results from this um, because I don't want to get redundant on this, but you get the idea. If you have only a free account at MyHeritage, this is the kind of information that you might see on a research results. I asked specifically about this just yesterday and they said this is what you would see on a free account and at least it gives you enough information to decide whether that is promising information and whether you have that or not. And if you don't have it, you might want to take note of it and do all of your research. Keep the link of all of this information and then exercise a free trial for a couple of weeks and pull down all that information if you don't want to subscribe. I also want to point out that MyHeritage has some features that nobody else has. They have chromosome browsing. They also have auto clustering, which is um, really kind of unique to MyHeritage. And they also have this really cool um, photo enhancer. But this photo enhancer is uh, my uh, ancestors in Laramie, Wyoming. And you can kind of see the before and the after of what that uh, house and family look like. It puts skin tones on there and it makes the grass green. And it, it's kind of cool. It's not perfect, but it, it's kind of cool. And by the way, that house still is there in Laramie, Wyoming. All right, so find my past, another third choice option. We're going to do something similar uh, on this in that we are going to search by location. We're going to search by uh, uploading your tree for free. This is a little bit different twist than uh, what we did on the others. And um, we're going to search the records for your target ancestor. So at Family Search, in order to search by location, you need to go to the A to Z record sets. And boy, this is really an eye-opener for me when I learned how to do this. Um, the A to Z record sets is really cool. First of all, it shows you what kind of records they have. And Find My Past is really known for their records for um, Ireland and the UK. Um, and you can see over here in the red box exactly what they have. They have Australia, New Zealand, Ireland, uh, England, Scotland, Wales, um, and Canada and the United States, and there's actually more, but uh, that's primarily what they are known for. So at fam Find My Pass, it's a little bit different. You cannot search other member trees. In fact, all of the member information is really, for the most part, private when it comes to the trees. And so what you can do is you can upload your tree for free as I have done here, and then all these little record hits pop up where, like on Ancestry, it's a leaf. Here it's an orange dot with a number in it telling me that there's five hints here. And so when you open that up, you get a bunch of uh, hints as to what records they have, and there is a ton of information here without actually viewing the record. You can see exactly a lot of information about uh, the family and the relevance. It says it's 80% relevant to, to my uh, research here. But it also shows uh, the tree. In this, uh, we found Joel Davis in another member's Find My Past family tree, and it says 99% relevant. So 
you can drill into that and see what kind of hints that they have there. In order to drill into any of those, though, you'll have to have a subscription. But you can certainly see enough information there to decide if it's worth it, if it's something that you didn't have on the other services. And so it might be, it might be some good hints there. All right. So you can also take your DNA from anywhere. You can download your DNA uh, and upload it for free to find my past. And from there, you might be able to find more ancestors. Also at Find My Past, they're known for the uh, 1939 register, which is kind of like a, a census uh, replacement. So it says here, in 1930, the 1939 register is one of the most important 20th century genealogical resources for England and Wales. In 1931, the census was destroyed by fire. No census was taken in 1941 because of the war. So in 1939's register is really the only national census-like resource available for this period. And that is directly uh, quoted from Find My Past. So I want to point that out because if you are jumping the pond and are trying to do research in uh, England or Wales, the 1939 register is probably one that you want to start with. So if you don't have a subscription to find my past, uh, you can really start the tree for free and see what hints pop up. You can upload your tree for free and see what hints pop up and you can upload your DNA. So the trifecta goal to kind of bring it home is again, we're going to search three resources, ancestry, family search, and one other of your choice. And so the goal is to try and hit 27 new pieces of data that you haven't researched before. And you're going to search each one of those in three different ways, location, name, and fan club. So I created this tracking chart. I didn't really, I'm not a huge fan of research logs, but I know a lot of people like to be methodical in how they're researching. And so I created this um, chart that's available for you um, and the uh, for those who are watching on the YouTube channel this is available for the channel members so if you want to be a channel member you can hit the join button and get this worksheet and uh, so this helps you track you know when you researched it did you find anything new, yes or no? What, where did you research it? Did you search on Ancestry, Family Search, Find My Past, My Heritage, or wherever, the archives or whatever? Um, and each column here now is search by location, search by target ancestor's name, or search by the fan club name. And so you would fill in the appropriate column. I've also created an example. Um, I did this on an ancestor, you know, Henry Gustav Henley, who I thought I had researched six different ways and uh, you know in the past I just researched this ancestor to death didn't think I had uh, anything left to find and so when I was developing this strategy I was you know taking my own advice and following through the process and I found 24 new pieces of data that I didn't have before and so the trifecta score in the left hand column is every new fact that I found and it could be it boy if you found a new census record um, you could hit uh, you know if there's eight family members there's eight points right there if they you know have data associated with them there's additional points for each piece of data and so you can you can like claim trifecta off of one <laughs> Uh, census record and so this is one of the reasons why this is ideal for people who have hit a brick wall they've you know done a lot of research in this case you'll only see one census record uh, located here at the bottom the rest of this was all new information um, that I discovered and so this column here is new information found about the target ancestor and that is specific to my target ancestor, Henry Gustav Henley, and what I found about him. In the other column, you know, the, you always trip across information about other family members while you're doing your research. 
And so this column is kind of like what I found for fan club members or even a little bit more distant family members. But I wanted to make note of it. Um, here I say, you know, Maggie Grigg, her death certificate, father of Henry Henley and Loena, Loena Green, same family but different couple because this family of Quakers, they seem to name all of their men Henry and all of their women Rebecca. And so there are a lot of Rebeccas and, and Henrys in this case, this Henry Henley, and he's living at the same time, by the way, as, as uh, this guy. And uh, he's married to Loena Green, I think is how you pronounce her name. But I also made note of the links on the right-hand side. So also in this uh, Excel spreadsheet that I've created for you um, is a blank worksheet that you could use. So long story short, there are two documents available for you. Those who are watching on the YouTube channel, uh, there are two documents here for you uh, for uh, the channel members. And the, the document on the right-hand side really just kind of lays out exactly what to do every step of the way and, um, and gives you specific information about ancestry and about family search and some of the nuances uh, of the different, the different resources. I hope that helps provide you a path and give you a little bit of understanding of how you can look beyond uh, the research box that you're in and well, a little bit more about how you can kind of bend your thinking uh, in research and really search in so many different ways to help find the answer you are seeking. All right, the handouts are in the community tab on the YouTube channel for the information access level channel members. All right, so there are some new tools for you to play with. Go forth and research. Until next time, keep on climbing your family tree.